Like other researchers at the book, I do experiments to find out um, what factors um, in people's health contribute to them living healthier and longer lives. We take measurements to compare lots of different features of these nematode worms that we work with. Um, we collect lots of different kinds of data, and then we figure out the best way to represent the data so that it shows the most important things of the drugs that we're testing. Um, and that takes a lot of experience and practice. So we are interested in sort of two aspects of the biology of these worms, but really we're interested in people, but we study the worms to get to that answer. Um, we look at the lifespan, how long the worms live on different kinds of compounds, and how healthy they are when placed on those same compounds. So my research question is, we have been given a list of about 10 different compounds that we're most interested in. And these are compounds that have been researched in other labs, and some of them we've discovered ourselves. So we want to know, of those 10, which ones are the very best in um, extending the lifespan and the health span of different kinds of worms from different places around the world. We start with several thousand worms, and we put them on a variety of little petri dishes uh, on which we've actually used a dropper to put compounds that we're testing. And some of the compounds um, make them live longer. They ended up extending their lifespan. So we just compare stacks of plates of worms with other stacks that have different compounds on them. We collect our data to enable comparisons between the different compounds by basically looking at all the worms every two days under a microscope. And we have to figure out if they're alive or dead. And so we count all the worms on the plates and just record those numbers. Number alive in a day, 25. Number dead, seven. And then we do it again two days later. So over time, we have, for every single worm, these thousands of worms that we're studying, we know when they die and how long they lived. So we put all that information into a table, then we turn it into a lifespan curve. On a lifespan curve, what we're interested in seeing is how many of the starting number are alive every day. The green line that you're seeing, that is all of the control worms. So control just means they had no drug applied to them. And that's a plate of, say, 40 worms. And then the other two colored lines are the compounds that we're testing, NP1 and thioflavin T. Both of the compounds, you can see that where they cross the blue line, the median line, is to the right. So they lived longer. More than half the worms live longer than half the worms on the controls. And so we can tell two things from that graph. One is that the overall median lifespan is longer for both of the compounds. And the maximum lifespan, if you look down at the bottom right, you'll see that they have these sort of long skinny tails. That means a few worms were still alive much later in their lives. So some of the longest lived worms on the drugs may have lived up to like 40 to 45 days. Whereas with no drug or no compound, they only lived about 30 days. I work in a consortium project, so I actually have two institutional partners um, on my project. One is in Oregon and one is in Rutgers. And we're all doing the same experiments with the same compounds and the same worms. So we're very interested to find out if our results are repeatable. Do we get the same responses from our worms at these other institutions? This is one of the biggest challenges today in science, is that oftentimes big discoveries, they get published and get a lot of press. Later, people try to reproduce those results and they can't get the same results doesn't mean that someone did bad science in the beginning, it just means science is kind of messy. And so to get to the bottom of that, we're getting ahead of the game by reproducing our experiments in these three labs. And believe me, it's very encouraging when we do get similar results. And we have been for this particular experiment. Um, we can compare different ages of worms on different compounds. And using this program, we can turn their movement into numbers that we can compare. So. Just last week, I was on the phone with my collaborator in Oregon, and she was asking me, um, what did you get for these worms on NP1? And I was able to go right to my data and tell her they're doing great. The day five worms or day nine worms or day 12 worms, um, they're always moving faster than untreated worms of the same age. So in every age, they're doing better. And we can compare very specifically how better they're doing. In conclusion, in my lab, we gather data using many different types of experiments. It's important to be able to express what we've learned with other scientists. And to do that, we use our data and graphs to indicate um, what compounds might afford advantages or give uh, worms longer lifespans and health spans.